Yes, indeed. Good morning. Good morning. Grand Rising. Uh, I enjoyed the uh, devotion this morning. Thank you for the scriptures read and the prayers prayed. Um, we all need more of that, don't we? It's just it's just when we look at <laughs> when we look across the landscape of our our country and our world, we need more scripture and more prayers. So I'm I'm thankful to be here this morning again. Grateful to my friend, Dr. Thomas, for the invitation to spend this time with you uh, talking about talking about marriage and, and family. I told you yesterday, I love I love doing that. I think it's the fabric, the core of of, of our world. If we just get the, the family stronger, then I just think everything else will will tend to fall in place. And so I'm glad to be here this morning. Let me um, James chapter one, James chapter one. Verse, uh, just one verse, James chapter one, verse number 19. You know this. Uh, so then, <clears throat> my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Let every man and woman be swift to hear slow to speak and slow to wrath. I want to use uh, for a subject this morning, can we talk? Can we talk? Now, now sisters, um, no brother that you know likes to hear those words, can we talk? When you come in, when you come in and you say, can we talk? He may not do it outwardly, but inwardly he's going, because he, in his mind, he's thinking, okay, what, what did I do? What did not do? What should I have done? Is it my anniversary? Is it? I mean, he's he's trying to figure out what what's going. But but I, in, nonetheless, I want to use as a subject. Um, can we talk? Um, because I know we tend to think that, and and we've always been told that the biggest problems in marriage are sex and money. But the majority of relationship experts will tell you that the number one problem in all relationships of all kinds is, is communication, but not just communication, but effective communication. Because if we learn to communicate effectively, then we can better understand where the other person is coming from and why they feel the way that they feel. I mean, think about it. Why, why does he act like that when I say this to him? Why does she respond that way when I touch her like that? What, what is it? What, what triggers are there? there? There could have been some triggers. You know, we all have triggers. 
whether they are acknowledged or even even fully understood we we all have triggers and and it is the the uh, the issue is normally something in a person's past that has not been effectively communicated dr thomas told you yesterday that my wife shalanda and i wrote a little devotional book and it's it's designed to get couples talking it takes a a look at the significance of each room in the house and and it's the room in the house called the basement that represents those things underneath that we that we bury and many times forget that they're even there it's the same in marriage it, it's it's what lies beneath that's not dealt with that tends to cause the most problems you remember that story in Mark chapter nine, where this boy's father brought him to Jesus saying that he, he couldn't talk. And he said, I brought him to your disciples and, and they couldn't heal him. And Jesus asked him, how long has this been going on? And he said, it's been going on since he was a child. So Jesus uh, healed him. But, 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 but when he did, he said, I rebuke this mute and deaf spirit to come out. See, Jesus knew that the real problem had to be dealt with. And the real problem was that he couldn't talk because he couldn't hear. Many times, many times, things that happened, even when we were children that have never been addressed or adequately addressed is why we have so many issues. And that's why there's so many communication issues because we end up treating the symptom instead of the source of the sickness. It's no secret with regard to husbands and wives that we have a, a difficult time understanding one another. There was this man who was walking across a beach and he found an old lamp and uh, he picked it up and rubbed it and the genie popped out. And, and so she said, uh, well, you, you, you did, you know, release me and but I got something to do today so instead of three wishes you only get one you get one wish what's your wish and he thought about it for a while and he said well I've always wanted to go to Hawaii but I'm afraid to fly so so can you build me a bridge all the way to Hawaii so that I can drive over there for vacation the genie laughed and said that's impossible she said think about the logistics of that feat how how would the supports ever even reach the bottom of the Pacific Ocean? How, how much concrete that would take? She said, no, think of another wish because that's impossible. He thought about it and he said, well, I've been I've been married and divorced three times and all three of my wives said that I don't care about their feelings and I'm insensitive and I don't understand them. So so my wish is that I can understand women. I, I want to understand what they're thinking, how they feel how they rationalize. The genie said, uh, you want that bridge to Hawaii to be two lanes or four lanes? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it, listen, we have a difficult time communicating. Uh, the communication issue is the issue of communication. And I know it sounds simple, but, but more marriages die by silence than they do by violence. And effective communication is the key. And you have to understand, men and women are different. We, we just communicate differently. Dr. Thomas and I can have a whole conversation just by doing this right here. That means had a pretty good day. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst. You know, my 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 knee kind of bothered me a little bit. They're getting on my nerves at church, but ain't nothing I can't handle it. It's all all of that was said by us doing this right here. But brothers, women don't work like that. You gotta talk. As hard as it is, you have to talk. And my sisters, you need to you need to help us out with that because you need to you need to tell him what it is that you 
want. You need to tell him how to love you. I tell sisters here all the time, stop making a brother guess. Stop, stop saying that we've been together all this time and he should just know. Well, we don't. If we haven't proven to you by now, we don't, <laughs> we don't know. So you're going to have to help us. You're going to have to tell us. And, and if you want effective communication with your man, listen, I told you yesterday, we've been together a couple of times. I'm going to talk to you like we family. Okay. Is that, is that, is that all right? Okay. If you want, if you want effective communication with your man, sister, learn how to talk to him. Learn how to talk to him. And nagging is not it. I'm going to repeat that. Nagging is not it. CBS News reported that nagging ends more marriages than infidelity. Are you hearing me? A man just can't take all that nagging. He just can't. Solomon the wisest man that ever lived said that it's better for a brother to get on the rooftop <laughs> in the corner of the roof and hide than to dwell with a cantankerous woman. Brother just can't take all that. So, so, so learning how to communicate with each other, poor communication is detrimental because it leads to misunderstanding and broken relationships. And communication is more than just verbal. It's body language. It's tone. It's timing. It's attitude. You have to know your spouse. You have to know that, that if they just walked in from work and it's been stressful all day, that might not be the time to talk to them. That might not be the time to give them your list of what didn't go right today. Give him a minute. Give him a minute. Same way, likewise with her. It, or, it, she might need some time before. Uh, learn learn them. Know them. Uh, if you've been, I used to tell my beautiful wife all the time, if you if you call me when I leave work and, and we talk all the way home, don't get upset when I get home and I don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> we... we we talked all the way home. I told you I'm out of words now. I told you everything. I told you everything I had to tell you. But learn that's a part of learning your spouse. And this communication problem is not just in marriage. It can bleed over into every relationship in your life. The parent-child relationship, the employee-employer relationship. The sibling relationship, the friends relationship, the church member relationship. Whenever the question, whenever there's the question, I don't know why they don't like me or or I don't know why we can't understand one another. Normally, it's a communication issue. And I guarantee you that we'll have better relationships if we learn how to effectively communicate which is seeking to be understood, but also seeking to understand. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time on the, on the text here. James, as you know, the half-brother of Jesus, and he writes this epistle to the church with an emphasis on the very practical nature of Christianity. This is a writing that's easy to read and is easy to understand. He, he focuses on putting your faith into action how we ought to treat God, and subsequently from that, how we ought to treat one another. And how we communicate is a big part of that. James helps us here with our communication. He gives us a recipe to help us get started. Here in verse number 19, he tells us three things. He tells us that a good communicator is, first of all, a good listener, secondly, a guided speaker, and thirdly, a gentle responder. Give me a couple of minutes and I'm done. First thing is a good listener. Verse number 19. Let every man, let every woman be swift to hear. Be swift to hear. You remember in elementary school when your teacher uh, would tell you that God gave you, God gave you two ears and one mouth. 
And that meant that you were supposed to do twice as much listening as you were as you were talking. That's one of those timeless truths that will benefit you in every circumstance of life. Because too often in our relationships, we don't take the time to really listen to each other and more so to hear each other out. It's called it's called active listening. Most of the time we're listening to respond. We we're listening to get our argument together. And I know that'd be true because I'm guilty of it. Shalanda and I can can get crossed up. And and when she and when she's giving it to me, she's talking. I'm I'm sitting there saying, because I talk for a living. So I'm sitting there saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I got you. I'm about to get her. I'm about to get her now. I'm about to get her. And, and, and when I'm doing that, I'm listening to respond to her. I'm not listening to hear her. All right. But we all need to learn how to listen and what to listen for. This is how we become better communicators. The goal should not be to out talk the other person or, or even to win an argument. Active listening is listening with the heart. And that leads to us getting, giving a better response. So let me give you this. Let me give you uh, three things about what to listen for. First, listen for God. Listen for God. We can listen for God when we pray, but we can also listen for God when we communicate with other people, including our spouse. God's spirit is in other Christians. So sometimes we can miss God if we don't actively listen to other people, especially our spouse. Listen for listen also for what is being said. There are times in commun in conversations that we're talking, but we're really not listening. We're not paying attention. You remember in marriage when you when you were first started dating and you could talk to each other for hours. Now you were trying to, you know, you 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 were trying to, but 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 you could talk for hours on end. You hang up, no, you hang up, no, you hang up. But because what they had to say was important to you. Now, after you've been married a while, you you so busy. Some a lot of times you just text each other or you yell in the other room or or even when the other person is talking, we pretend to be listening while our minds are a million miles away. But we have to learn how to actively listen to one another. If you're not paying attention, then then you're not really listening for what is being said. And many times that's how arguments ensue because we completely miss what the other person is really trying to say. There is a technique in active listening is called mirroring. It's just a note for you. It is mirroring is repeating back what was said to ensure that you heard it correctly. So, so, so it's, it looks like something like this. So I think what I heard you say was, and repeating it back. You're showing them that you heard them. And you're also showing them the importance of you understanding what you heard. All right. So there's three ways. Listen for God. Listen for what's being said. And then and then listen for why it's being said. Listen for why it's being said. Are they saying it to you because they're hurting? Are is what they're saying coming from some pain in their past? Are they saying it because they're angry about something and they don't know any other way to express it? it are they saying it because it's a reaction to something that, why are they saying what they're saying? Active listening helps us answer these questions. So James says, if you want to be a good communicator, you have to not only be a good listener, but then secondly, you have to be a guided speaker. Be swift to hear. And here it is, slow to speak, slow to speak. Newsflash, you don't have to say everything that comes to your mind. Did you know that? 
You don't have to say everything that comes to your mind. Guided speech means that you think before you speak. Because, because I don't know, I, I, again, like I told you yesterday, y'all are too smart for this way up north. But down here, I, I know people who, who think that they can say whatever they want to say to you, however they want to say it, with no repercussions attached to it. <laughs> but you you ever been where you want to tell them, and listen, I'm I'm saved, but I, I I I if you keep yeah at work, you know, if you keep talking to me, that BC me, he he went down in the water. He he did go down. But I, I need you to know that he he's able to be <laughs> resurrected again. Learn how to talk to people. Words have power. I don't know who said it. I'm still looking for him. I don't know who said sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may not. That's the biggest lie ever told. Words have power. Words hurt. What you say and how you say it can mean all of the difference in the world as to how a conversation is received. We don't have time to go there, but if you go over two chapters, James chapter three, you know how he talks about the tongue and how it's a small member, but it's that it can burn down the whole forest. That's how powerful the tongue is. How you talk to people matters. It matters in the environment that you create. That matters when you want to have an effective conversation. And, and when you're trying to understand them and, and them trying to understand you, I want you to look at all the different possibilities that spring forth from the communication effort. There's, there's what you wanted to say. There's what you actually said. There's what the other person heard you say. There's what the other person said about what you said or thought about what you said. What you think the other person said about what you said. There's a lot that goes into the communication moment. That's why Solomon said that a wise man thinks before he speaks. And Paul says, after you thought about it, think about it again, because what you say needs to be true. It needs to be loving and it needs to be necessary for edification. How we talk to one another, how we say what we say to one another matters if we want to be effective communicators. So so to be a good communicator, James says we need to become a good listener. Guided speaker, last thing is this, a gentle responder, a gentle responder. 119, James 119, be, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Slow to wrath, that means not getting angry so quickly. Slow to be angry does not mean that we're never angry or we hold in our anger as long as possible before we let it out. That's not what it means. Slow to anger means taking the time to intentionally get all of the facts before I respond. Think about it. Get all the facts. But is it true? Am I hearing correctly? Is this what the other person really said? Is this what the other person meant to say? I need to ask myself before I get angry, before I go to wrath, am I possibly just in my feelings today? Am I, am I being overly sensitive today? Did, did I possibly just take it the wrong way and that's not how it was even meant or said? Take the source of it, the, the source of the uh, of, of what's being said. Take, take all of that into account before I respond. Listen for what is being said and listen for why it's being said. And listen, certainly when it comes to marriage, godly communication is essential to a godly marriage because without it, you can't love, you can't trust, 
can't compromise, you can't be open, you cannot understand or be understood. So James says, watch how you respond to people. You know somebody that that uh, as soon as you say something to them, they on 10 already. I mean, you can't even say something without them just, which causes you not to even want to talk to them in the first place. And when that happens, the possibility of a positive and productive conversation goes left real quick, doesn't it? If you're one of those people that needs to that needs to take a pause, take a break before you respond, then do that. It's OK to do that. I think I personally think that it's better to say nothing at the time than to say the wrong thing, because once words leave your mouth, you can never get them back. And I've said that before here, and I know people have said, well, Ephesians 4, 26, to be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And that's true. That's book. That's the word. That's Paul. I, I, I believe it. But I have, again, I don't want to be eisegetical, especially with the kind of teacher that you have, but not letting the sun go down on your wrath, I believe, is more so talking about don't die in with this anger don't die in the situation that you're in now the, the caveat to that is none of us ever know when we're going to die so that's why it's better not to let the sun go down on your wrath okay but being practical if you make me mad angry at 723 and the sun goes down at 725 those two minutes might not be enough time for me to get myself together before I respond to you. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm saying? I may need, I may need a minute. I may need a little time. And I think that that's okay so that I don't say the wrong thing. Don't ignore, don't, don't do the silent treatment. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying as a grown up, say to another grown up, Listen, that upset me and I don't want to say the wrong thing. So let me let me chill. Give me a minute and we'll talk about it a little bit later on. That makes sense. The bottom line is, is if you want to be a better communicator, one that honors God and how you speak and how you treat other people, then James says, be a good listener, be a guided speaker and be a gentle responder. In other words, Tune in, tone down, and sweeten up. Stop getting so mad because somebody got to tell you something. Create an environment that welcomes communication. It's because it's not all, again, it's not always what you say. Many times it's how you say it. And listen, I love you. I'm getting to know you. I love you. But if more than two people have told you the same thing, that you don't know how to talk to people, or 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 you you're not approachable or or, or or if more than two people have told you that then maybe it's not them maybe it's you and maybe you need to look at yourself again why do i get so angry when somebody says something to me here it is and i'm done anger is is good for getting attention but it's terrible for building relationships. Effective communication is about building relationships, not simply about getting attention. Because it's not about winning an argument. It's about winning the person, winning the relationship. In marriage, we have to learn how to talk to one another. I told you yesterday, marriage is made in heaven, but the maintenance of it has to be done on earth. Learn how to talk to each other. We we strive every day to be more and more godlike, and God is the excellent communicator who listens to us no matter what we have to say. He gives us the benefit of the doubt. Uh, he interprets for us. He gives us room to repent. That's what love looks like to me. That's what love looks like to me. And when I need you to love me the most is when I'm the most unlovable. So let's practice today. Let's 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 practice talking to each other 
in a loving manner, responding to each other in a loving manner, listening to each other in a loving manner. God bless you. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your word. We love you. We thank you for marriage. We thank you for the blessing that we have to do life with someone. Help us to cherish that and communicate with that person out of love. Listen to them, listen to their hearts, hoping and praying that they listen to ours because we want, we genuinely want the best for each other. We want to please you, dear God, but we also want to please each other. So help us to do that. Give us peace and discernment in our communication. We love you. And in Jesus name we pray. Amen. We love you. We love you.